Expert Team. Well, I have a few different things to talk to you guys about today. Now, there's been a lot of uh, headlines coming out recently in the past couple of days with titles such as Planet X Bombshell, NASA Finally Admits Alien World Hiding on the Edge of Solar System. Now, just a, a quick recap here. For those of you who don't know, there has been a conspiracy going on for years now that there is a rogue planet out there on the outskirts of our solar system that every few thousand years swings back through the middle of our solar system and crashes into Earth. And if you've been following uh, the recent doomsday predictions that I spoke about, uh, there is a guy who goes by the name of David Mead. If you remember, he is the one who put out the uh, failed, recently failed doomsday prediction that the world was going to end on September 23rd. Well, when that didn't happen, uh, the date was pushed back to October 21st. And the cause behind it is said to be that of this mysterious rogue planet that NASA is said to have been hiding from us for years now, denying its existence. And just a quick note here, uh, you know, if you believe in Nibiru, that's fine, I have nothing against you, but I just do want to point out that people have been saying that this planet was going to come in and hit us for 20 plus years now. You know, so if that's any indicator, then, well, hopefully you guys get what I'm saying here. And so, it is true that recently NASA did reveal, and we've had some evidence in the past that, it, you know, it did exist, that there are, and there is indeed, a rogue unknown planet, previously unknown planet on the outer reaches of our solar system. Uh, this comes after the uh, discovery of some strange things happening out there on the outer reaches of our solar system, things such as the tugging on planets out there. Something out there is tugging on bodies. And it's also said that this mysterious object out there may even be tilting our entire solar system. But again, it's ever so slightly, and it, you know, it doesn't appear to pose any sort of threat to Earth. And so this team of astronomers from the California Institute of Technology found evidence of a real planet four times the size of planet Earth, which takes around 20,000 years to orbit the Sun. And they discovered this last year. Now, NASA has admitted for the first time that the evidence exists for this new planet, which the Caltech team is calling Planet 9. And they're saying the evidence for this is compelling. The space agency has said that the mysterious super-Earth, which is 10 times the weight of our own planet, may be so powerful that it's pulling the other planets out of orbit and even tilting the entire solar system to one side. In a recent statement, NASA said, quote, it might be lingering bashfully on the icy outer edges of our solar system, hiding in the dark, but subtly pulling the strings behind the scenes, stretching out the orbits of distant bodies, perhaps even tilting the entire solar system. It added, quote, the signs are so far indirect, mainly its gravitational footprints, but that adds up to a compelling case nonetheless. Doomsayers believe that Nibiru, which they say is the name of this mysterious planet, will get close enough to Earth to be seen by amateur stargazers before Christmas. Now, the various space agencies, including NASA, have gone to great lengths to deny that this new Planet 9 is Nibiru, or has anything to do with it, or that it is any kind of threat to us. It said, quote, If the planet is there, it's extremely distant, and will stay that way, with no chance, in case you're wondering, of ever colliding with Earth, or bringing days of darkness. Konstantin Batyan, who discovered Planet 9 with colleague Mike Brown, said, quote, There are now five different lines of observational evidence pointing to the existence of Planet 9. If you were to remove this explanation and imagine Planet 9 does not exist, then you generate more problems than you solve. And all of a sudden, you have five different puzzles, and you must come up with five different theories to explain them. So yeah, that's what we know so far, okay? It, NASA has basically finally admitted it. All of the evidence pointed to it, and we have a major space agency coming out and confirming it. So that's where we are. Uh, and there is no significant threat that anyone can see that anything is coming towards Earth. So, now, in other news, pretty big news, I've been getting a lot of emails to post a video about this. Tom DeLonge, the former singer of Blink-182, which was a popular rock band back in the late 90s, early 2000s, um, is said to be, well, by some at least, to be at the forefront of ufology. 
Uh, he was even granted the UFO Researcher of the Year award uh, earlier in the year. Some have even gone boldly as far as to say that Mr. DeLong is the world's leading UFO hunter. And if you guys watched my previous videos talking about Tom, you probably get the idea that I don't have a very high opinion of what he's doing, or at least of, you know, what they're saying about him, and that it, he is suddenly the top leading UFO researcher. Now, primarily, his prominence to the UFO field came when it was discovered through the WikiLeaks email dumps that he had been sending emails to John Podesta. And so that kind of skyrocketed him into the mainstream UFO community and, and you know, into the news. And all of a sudden, um, he is putting out books having to do with UFOs. He is making claims that he has been in touch with some very high-ranking individuals who are giving him information about the alien phenomenon. Uh, information that is said to have never been released by anyone else. And so obviously you can see why there'd be such a, you know, an excitement around this. And you know, I've listened to all of his uh, interviews with people from the moment he was jolted uh, into this field and into notoriety. And to be honest, and again, this is just my opinion, he hasn't revealed anything yet that we don't already know. All right, he did a lot of interviews where he, he's a very well, you know, he's well spoken. He's articulate. He seems to know what he's talking about. And granted, he has done his research, but he never really revealed anything. You know, and, and he says, well, to go out and buy his books. Of course, he's putting out books. I want you to go buy them. And if you guys remember, back in February of this year, he told everyone that he had a huge announcement that was going to rock the world and that would be coming out within 60 days. And, well, 60 days came and went. No big announcement. It wasn't until just this past week that announcement was said to finally be going to occur. Uh, with news stories such as inside knowledge about unidentified aerial phenomena could lead to world-changing technology, and that something extraordinary is about to be revealed. Uh, now, for many of us, we thought that this was Tom uh, finally coming out and admitting some hard data, you know, giving us some good information that he had learned that we've been waiting all year to see. And so what was it that he finally revealed? Well, that he's starting a company and that he's looking for investors. And so he held a, um, a live stream, sort of like press conference or event, where he revealed that he had created something called the To The Stars Academy of Arts and Science, of which uh, he is president and interim CEO. The Academy includes three synergistic divisions, science, aerospace, and entertainment. The Public Benefit Corporation is seeking to serve the public good through exploring, quote, the outer edges of science and the understanding of phenomena. And it has these different divisions, as I said earlier. The Science Division will conduct the research. The Aerospace Division will apply the science to create, quote, next generation energy and propulsion concepts for transportation and spaceflight. And finally, the entertainment branch will offer, quote, informative storytelling that provides insight into the journey and provokes curiosity into the profound yet unresolved mysteries of the world. So I don't know what that is, if that, you know, if that means they're going to start producing TV shows, you know, fictional TV shows, I don't know. Uh, but, um, you know, it, he does list some of the people that are working with him, some of these high ups, as I like to call them. And so, here's my beef with this. I, it, it's not even a real beef, but I'm just apprehensive. So, I, I don't have a problem with Tom, but I, I just, I want to see some hard evidence, alright? He's been talking about this for a year now. And so far, all we received is by my books. Um, all we've received is, I have a big announcement coming, okay? I'm going to reveal the truth about the alien phenomenon. And now we have this huge announcement where he is once again saying that, well, we are going to reveal all of this secretive info, we have all of these secret high-ups working with us, but we need you to invest, and the minimum price to invest is $200. And my big question is, did you really need to create this huge corporation with all of these different wings, and, you know, why couldn't you just release the information? Why do I have to be an investor and to put down a minimum $200? Uh, so you can create this venture. I just, I wish he would just be more clear about it. 
forget the creation of a corporation and generating potentially millions of dollars for it just release the information all right just release it you know that would at least tell me that you're serious and that okay this guy is onto something and you know another issue i have is that why all of the sudden are these big name former government high ups suddenly coming out and spilling their guts to tom delong uh, you know a former lead singer of a rock band who once spoke about effing his dog <laughs> i mean i'm not making this up and you know that's my question why are they suddenly opening up to this man when they've opened up to no one else and that makes me worry that they are feeding him disinfo and that this is all just a big setup so you know that's my view on it call me cynical um i would just say call me skeptical that's all um i think tom has a passion for this or at least i hope he does but i just hope he's not being used or fed incorrect information and that this really will end up being you know something for the greater good of humanity and that the info does finally come out uh, and uh, you know until then we will work alongside him and anyone else who is trying to release this info and we'll see what happens so let me know what you guys think down in the comments i'm just putting all of the different aspects of this out there so lastly today uh, I want you guys to check out a really cool new video by my friends over at UFO Seekers. Now, I've featured them and spoken about them before. The number of other UFO channels that I ever vouch for, I mean, I can. there's less than I can count on my fingers. And one of them is UFO Seekers. They do a great job. It's a team, and they actually go out there. They go out to Area 51. They get out there on the ground, and their production values are amazing. And so recently, they were out there on the ground doing some surveillance when they captured a very strange, unidentified flying object. Uh, where on March 11th, they captured a sequence of photographs uh, that contained this very strange object. Um, does not look to be a drone, an aircraft, a balloon, nothing. And they saw this thing moving while they were uh, UFO hunting in the Sierra Nevada mountains near Sherman Pass Road. And when you see them show the photos in sequence, seeing this thing move, um, it's, it really is hair-raising. So I want you guys to head over to their channel and subscribe. Show them some love, all right? Because they are one of the, you know, the, the fastest growing up-and-coming UFO research channels. And they work well with Secure Team. Because whereas I am, I, you know, I'm limited to what I can do from my computer. And although I can do a lot, these guys actually get out there on the ground and are able to do the things that I can't do. So I think it, you know, it makes a perfect sort of partnership, and we just love featuring their stuff. So head over, I'll put the link to their new video down in the video description. You guys head over and check it out, and tell me what you think, and tell them Tyler sent you. So that's all I have for today, guys. I want to thank you all for stopping by. Be sure to stay tuned, I've got much more in the pipeline, and I will see you all back in just a bit.